What's going on everybody? This is Kai Feldman of Shoot First Basketball and welcome to what is hopefully the first of many weekly shot breakdowns. Today's focus is Giannis and Tedekompo, whose shooting struggles have been well documented. By now, so is his success as a shooter during his rookie season. And in this video, using both game footage and analytics, we're going to take a closer look at the evolution of Giannis's shot year to year. This video will focus on three potential adjustments for his shot. His hand placement, his elbow angle, and release timing. I'll also give you a couple main takeaways that can ensure you don't make the same mistakes in your journey to become a better shooter. First, let's start with his hand placement. There are a few slight differences we'll study based on his free throws. This angle gives us a great look on his shooting hand grip. He has a great line from his elbow to the tip of his middle finger, which is very important. Second, his shooting fingers, which ideally are the index and middle, do not cross over to the left side of that ball. They come in from the right and get right to the middle, resulting in a nice middle finger release. In fact, we have that NBA logo on the ball, which perfectly marks the center of it here. So we can see that he does a good job lining up his hand. As we can see on his follow through, those fingers follow through downward and his pinky sticks up and out a little bit, which does not always happen, but can be a good sign that the correct fingers are doing the work. Now, by the time he reaches his release point, his only finger on the right side of the ball is his pinky. Using that NBA logo as our midpoint once again, the shooting hand alignment is definitely concerning. His right hand is so far across the ball that his left thumb actually overlaps with his middle finger. As a result, by the time he reaches his release point, his shooting hand and guide hand are at war for control of the ball. Speaking of that guide hand, Giannis has made some changes there as well that may have hurt his accuracy. Early in his career, he kept that left hand more in front of the ball until it was time to release, which is pretty common as we look at Damian Lillard and Duncan Robinson using the same strategy. Given Giannis's physical traits, many would make the case that some of these same techniques don't apply to him due to his larger hands. However, when we look at Kawhi, whose hands are almost the exact same size, we see a similar picture. That ball comfortably sits between the two hands, and on release, the left hand naturally moves out of the way. In fact, we can learn from Kawhi's shooting hand as well. When we check back with this picture of Giannis, we see the difference once again. There is no overlap between Kawhi's hands, and his shooting hand comes in from the right side, ensuring he is index and middle finger dominant on that release. The next issue I'd like to bring your attention to is his elbow angle. Many of the great shooters in today's league, known for their range, have smaller angles between their forearms and biceps, which helps them generate power. When less power is needed, these guys always have the ability to change the angle and get to a higher release point. Here, Giannis is a rookie, did a good job with that shooting arm, but as time has passed, he's moved the ball further from his body and it never comes back in before release. He barely breaks 90 degrees, and in the end, he has more of a push than a shot. It also causes a lot of tension in his shooting shoulder and the rest of his arm. That kind of stiffness makes it extremely difficult to smoothly transfer power. Which brings us to our last problem, his release timing. Even at the beginning of his motion, we can observe some small differences in rhythm and fluidity. First off, Giannis has much less of a knee bend in his rookie year, so the lower body has less distance to travel. Last year, around the same point, Giannis is almost in a squat position, which means his upper and lower body are not on track to finish together for a fluid release. Here at his release point, we see the consequences. On one side, we have a player transferring all the energy in his body at once, and on the other, we see Giannis is pretty much done moving his upper body as the ball gets to his release point, while his legs still have a lot of work to do. This kind of disconnect results in the wide range of bad misses we've become accustomed to seeing watching him play. Once again, a common explanation for this change is he has gained too much strength and has had to adjust his shot to account for the 50 plus pounds of muscle he has put on. Because of their size, these videos of guards like Curry and Harden do not necessarily disprove this theory. John Collins, however, is a very capable three-point shooter, about 37% over his career. And when we compare his jump shot to Giannis as a rookie, we see some similarities. Although Giannis is one of a kind, and there may not be anybody that shares his physical traits exactly, Collins is currently listed at 235 pounds, while Giannis is 242. That does not necessarily mean that their strength is identical, but it's close enough to prove a drastic change in Giannis's form may not have been necessary. Also, the body usually has a way of organizing itself and making its own minor adjustments as a player gets stronger. A 
subtle change in a shooter's release timing or elbow angle can occur, but if a player is shooting as well as Giannis did, a complete restructuring should not be forced no matter how much strength is gained. Most importantly, it's clear an excess of power is not the issue. I tracked every three-point miss of his career and recorded how he missed. I also kept track of bad misses, which consisted of any shot that missed the rim or hit the backboard first. When we look at these numbers, we're going to break his career into two parts, years one through three and years four through seven. In his first few seasons, Giannis airballed three three three-pointers, all three of which were in his third year. Since then, he's had 47 short airballs. Even when we account for his increase in attempts, he is still missing this way four times as often. If an excess of power were a problem, these numbers would be drastically different. Instead, the changes made to Giannis' shot address a problem that doesn't exist, and as a result, power has somehow become an issue for one of the strongest players in the league. When we look at his percentage over time, it seems that things started to go south after his rookie year, as his percentage dropped from 34.7 to 15.9. By seeing that dip alone, it would be reasonable to assume an adjustment was made in the offseason to set him back, and he has not been able to recover from it. However, the small sample size from his sophomore year makes it hard for us to be certain. After attempting 118 his rookie year, that number dipped to only 44. Also, as you can see here, many of these 44 were not good attempts. For some reason, it seems Giannis was tasked with taking a lot of the late clock and end of quarter heaves, all 13 of which are shown here. When the sample size is already as small as it is, his percentage is skewed even further. When we eliminate these attempts, his percentage rises to 22, which is still a significant drop but on only 31 attempts, it's likely that number would stabilize over time if given the opportunity. An article from Daryl Blackport says it takes about 750 attempts for a player's three-point percentage to stabilize. Since Giannis will probably never reach that number over the course of a season, we're forced to speculate based on the optics of his shot. Although his release point was a bit higher, his jumper still looks fairly fluid in season two based on the few attempts he did take. His elbow angle is still smaller, and his left hand does not interfere with the right. When we compare it with his current shot, we still see a big difference in these two areas, which is a good thing. That all begins to change in year three. As we see here in that season, his hand placement and shooting motion become very similar to where he's at now. You can see him start to move the ball a little bit higher and further away from his head. He's also beginning to force that right elbow in as we see it go way inside of his shoulder. At this point, his hand placement is still pretty good He's not quite as stiff, and the ball still comes off the right fingers. However, in this clip from last year, there's a small change of direction once we get to his wrist, and his release is kind of inverted. His elbow to wrist line angles towards the left side of his body, across, and at his wrist, the line turns back towards the right side of the body, away. This results in a release off the ring or pinky finger, and the hand grip we looked at earlier. Although the hand placement and release are the visible changes, they're probably a result of forcing an unnatural release point and elbow position. When we look at his attempts in season four, we can see the change in his release point again. Not only is it higher now, but he also begins to bring it back behind his head, which results in a choppy two motion shot. As a rookie, his release point was a little bit lower and more importantly, in front of his head. Once again, side by side, the difference in the line becomes apparent. In year five, he corrected that issue as the ball no longer comes too far back, but it seems like he wasn't given permission to lower his release point or bring the ball any closer to his head, so he continues to have the same energy and power problems as the previous year. This is a common mistake, one that I have made as well. Sometimes as coaches, we see a flaw in a player's jump shot, and we try to correct it independent of the rest of the player's body. In this case, Giannis brought the ball behind his head, so he corrected that issue and moved his release point. The problem is, The reason the ball was brought back to begin with was probably to produce power and make up for the higher release point. So moving the ball back in front does not get to the root of the problem, which is in this case, missing short. It actually has made the problem worse, as we can see from the numbers we reviewed earlier. Here's a pretty good representation of the evolution of Giannis' release point. Year one looks pretty good, right above his right eye. By years three and four, it's moved up and back a bit. And year five seems to be the beginning of his current form with the stiffer, further out release. In the last few years, these fluidity problems have worsened. 
We can see here his range of motion is severely restricted, and it has even begun to affect his free throw shooting, where he has been a career low 63% the last two years. Since year five, the bad misses have persisted, and Giannis has not been able to become a consistent threat from the perimeter. Now, there are a couple lessons we can all learn by observing Giannis' development. The first one is very simple. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Although I have offered some potential correction to Giannis' shot, I want to make it clear that I am not for a one-size-fits-all approach to shooting. For example, Malcolm Brogdon is shooting right around 90% from the line and 38% from distance for his whole career. Check out his elbow angle. It may be even larger than Giannis's, and Brogdon is a smaller guard who needs that extra power. Sadiq Bey, who is in the middle of a great rookie season and just won Eastern Conference Player of the Week, is shooting 42% so far this season. He also keeps his shooting arm around 90 degrees. Now, I do believe Brogdon and Bay's early and efficient release timing helps make up for this tendency as they maximize the energy in their lower body for a more fluid motion. But the point still stands. There's more than one way to make shots, and if you figure out a motion that works for you, stick with it. This relates to our next takeaway. Comfort is key. Although I do favor certain styles of shooting, these suggestions are specific to Giannis and based on the footage and numbers I've gathered of his. They may work for you, and I encourage you to try them out, especially if you feel like you have the same power problems. Sometimes finding a consistent shooting motion can require some trial and error on your part, and being comfortable should always be your top priority. Proper timing or footwork may take time to develop, but simply getting the ball to the basket or holding in your hands should never be difficult. Right now, all of Giannis's problems could be summed up like this. Shooting is very difficult for him. A lot of physical and mental effort is being exerted, and like I said earlier, that should not be the case for somebody with his proven ability. The good news for him is he has proven at points that he has the touch and skill to be a consistent shooter. Although it may seem far away now, I don't think it's impossible to regain his old form with the right adjustments. He could be an all-time great, and with his work ethic and coachability, I really hope somebody intervenes sooner rather than later, so he can reach that potential. Thanks for watching. As I said earlier, I hope to do more of these shot breakdowns going forward. So if you like this one, make sure you hit subscribe. If there's a play you'd like me to take a closer look at, let me know.